Imagine, if you can, a town of homes situated in the heart of one of the world's most beautiful, peaceful, and prosperous valleys. A town endowed with natural beauty, perfect climate, a town of good citizens, industrious and prosperous, splendid schools, churches, parks, and modern civic improvements, a peaceful country town with the modern conveniences of the city, a town where the housewife's duties can be made a pleasure where a man can grow rich in return for his efforts, where the child can grow up in the right environment to healthy, educated manhood and womanhood. This was written in 1925 to promote the land of Kerman, the type of dream which transformed Kerman from a single building called Collis Station in 1891 to a small city of about 15,000 people in 2006. But what of this dream? Where did it all start? How did it all begin? Comes the railroad, 1891. The Southern Pacific Railroad laid the tracks through the San Joaquin Valley from Fresno to Tracy. Watering stations were installed along the way with names like Pratton, Floyd, Ingle, Arbios, Cromer, Salaxo, Oxalis, and of course, Collis Station. It's named for Collis P. Huntington, president of the Southern Pacific Railroad. This is the first building and the first official name for what was to become Kerman. Jumping ahead to 1906, Collis Station was renamed for the first three letters of the surnames of William Kirkhoff and Jacob Manser to make Kerman. They purchased 3,027 acres of land from the Bank of California. By 1906, Kerman had been laid out into city blocks. The Kerman Inn was completed at a cost of $15,000 and used to accommodate the employees and visiting guests of the Farms Company. The Farms Company also developed Plaza Park. The beautiful park provides a place for people to gather and relax. Businesses started coming into Kerman. The oldest continuous business in Kerman is the Kerman News and still continues today. Kerman was still young, but there are many great things ahead. In 1907, the old wooden bridge was torn down and a new bridge was built across the San Joaquin River, just north of the Vinland Colony. It was named Skaggs Bridge after a farmer living on the north side of the river. This would be the second and most beautiful of the four bridges. The California Stock Food Company built south of town in 1908. They gathered and stored alfalfa hay to feed the livestock. The farmers brought their load of hay to be unloaded, but because of such a great quantity, they would wait in line sometimes all night long. If you fell asleep, you would lose your place in, in line as the person behind you would pull around and take your place. Late in the year, Mr. Henry Lohr began holding tabernacle meetings four miles north of Kerman and began making plans for a new church building. The Kerman News ran the following announcement. Kerman Vineyards and Orchards, $100 per acre. The same land today would sell for at least $20,000 per acre. The main agricultural industries which were in Kerman were cotton, picked strictly by hand, alfalfa hay, it was not put into bales but loosely stacked, and raisins. The vines just grew across the ground and were not staked in those days. In 1909, the Bethany Luther Church was completed at the corner of Shaw and Madeira Avenues. This became the first church building in the area. The Vinland Colony soon had a general merchandise store and a fine elementary school. The Kerman Grammar School was built out of reinforced concrete and could hold 200 students. Buses were acquired to transport students in comfort. Artis Huggins, an early Kermanite, tells of her experience as a bus driver. I traveled south to Central Avenue to pick up the four Bland children. We were never late, but never had to hurry. 
At times, when the big boys got rowdy, I'd stop the bus and make them get off. The bus only traveled about 30 to 35 miles an hour at top speed. Someone would open up the back exit door and let them get on again, and we would keep on going. George Helsom and Brother Charlie came to Kerman from Los Banos, where he was head blacksmith for the Miller and Lux Land Company. They opened the Kerman blacksmith shop and began repairing plows, shoot horses, and started repairing the new horseless carriages when they appeared on the scene. Kerman property is now selling for $150 per acre. The Button family opened the Kerman Telephone Company and other new businesses started coming into Kerman over the next few years. Kerman opened its first library in 1910. The Methodist Episcopal Church was built for $5,000 and is the first permanent religious structure inside the town of Kerman. The building which is now stucco is still standing today. Kerman High School has started. It took place in the Bethany Church building in the basement. There were 12 students the first day. They expected 40. The colony schools which fed into the high school were Sunset, Dakota, Vinland, and Empire. Then there was Kerman Grammar School and Floyd District School. Two years later, the new high school would be built at the corner of Madeira and Clinton Avenues. Some wonder why Kerman Union High School was built so far out of Kerman. It was built in the center of all the colony schools so all could have even access to the high school as seen on this map. Besides, it was better in the country. Riverboats traveled the San Joaquin River from 1852 until 1869 when they were discontinued. They would come up the river loaded with goods for the business and his farmers. They would also have passengers, mainly for excursions. The paddle wheelers would come as far as Sycamore Point, about one quarter mile east of Skaggs Bridge. In exceptionally wet years, they would go as far as Friant. In 1911, a fellow by the name of Captain McMurtry thought river travel up the San Joaquin could be restarted. The steamboat J.R. McDonald traveled up the river towing a barge named Eastside. On June 15th, over 2,000 people came out to Skaggs Bridge to see the J.R. McDonald steamboat. When it reached Skaggs Bridge, the barge was anchored to the riverbank and used as a loading dock. During the celebration, the barge was renamed Fresno and christened with San Joaquin River water. The celebration went on for two days. People would tour the paddle wheeler, and the first evening, Captain McMurtry had a dinner for all the dignitaries which arrived. It was finally reported over 3,000 people took tours on the riverboat. This was the beginning of the Kerman Day celebration. When Captain McMurtry made his return trip to Stockton, the riverboat almost did not make it back as the water level was too low. After several hours of discussion with the irrigation district, enough water was released so the steamboat could make it through. Paddle wheelers never came up the river again. The following year, 1912, the second annual Kerman Day celebration was held at the picnic area at Skaggs Bridge. Over 600 people attended. The town purchased land for $4,000 at the corner of Madeira and Clinton Avenues. And here they built a new Kerman High School at a cost of $2,120. The high school opened in September with 26 students in attendance. In June of 1913, Kerman High School had its first graduating class. These first graduates must have been proud, not only of receiving their diplomas, but of being the first to graduate from Kerman High School. There had been several rabbit drives, but in 1916, the rabbit population had grown so large, the pests were ruining crops at a fast rate. They began at 9 a.m. on March 3rd and headed north toward the river. A temporary corral was built, and the men would chase the rabbits into the corral where they would clubbed to death. Word is, a, a Chinaman from San Francisco came with a flatbed truck and hauled away the dead rabbits to be sold in his market. There was a costly fire on November 20th, 1917. The Dakota block was destroyed at a cost of $75,000. Kerman had a hand-drawn chemical wagon, but 
The volunteers arrived too late, and it was of little help for such a large fire. A firebomb had been thrown through the window of one of the businesses. Lost in the fire were the Kerman Hardware, Telephone Company, Meat Market, and Fresno Farms Company. In 1918, squirrels were a menace throughout the valley, so the state government sponsored a squirrel killing contest for school children. Individual prizes were given to children, and the schools would also receive prizes. Students killed the squirrels and sent the tails in bunches of tin to the county commissioner. President Teddy Roosevelt, 26th President of the United States and two of his congressmen, so the story goes, spent the night in the Kerman Inn in 1919. The roster didn't tell where he came from or where they were going. The Kerman Inn was demolished in 1993. By the 1920s, a train which went through Kerman to San Francisco was called the Lark. It would pass through Kerman about 3 a.m. A person could take the Lark, spend the day in San Francisco, and return on what they called the Owl at 11 p.m. The new Plaza Garage opened for business, and the old Dakota Block was rebuilt. A new main building at the high school was built. It had two floors, which were joined on each end by wide sloping ramps instead of staircases for easier and safer movement of the students. The Chamber of Commerce was instrumental in the purchase of an electric flashing sign in 1925, which read Kerman, and they placed it at the corner of Madeira and Whitesbridge. On December 4th, a bold daylight holdup was made at the First National Bank. The robbers escaped in a taxi cab with $625. Plaza Park had grown and so had Kerman, but slowly because of the Great Depression which hit in 1929. The new Roman Catholic building was dedicated in June of 1930. This gave Kerman its third religious structure. The First National Bank of Kerman closed in 1932 because of embezzlement and Kerman was without a bank. William Richards, a teller, confessed for stealing $67,000 in missing funds and served three years at McNeil Federal Penitentiary. Booty Stephens' garage, which was located behind his service station, was completely destroyed by fire. In 1936, plans for an athletic park were underway. Softball was becoming a popular sport. The William G. Kirkhoff Land Company gave 27 lots to the Athletic Park Association. This became the present Kirkhoff Park. The first softball game and dedication of the park was attended by 340 people. The San Joaquin River flooded because of heavy snow and early warm spring weather in 1937. It washed away the large sandy beach where the annual Kerman Days picnic was held. The first Kerman Days, which were held in Kirkhoff Park, were very different from those of today. A bank finally came to Kerman. The Bank of America established a branch office in October. This ended a five-year period when Kerman was without a bank. Kerman Union High School's new gymnasium was completed and dedicated in 1940. Many a basketball game, PE class, and rally took place within its walls. It served the old high school for many years. It still stands today, but needs lots of work. December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy, a sneak attack by the Japanese on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Besides 18 ships being damaged or destroyed, along with 170 planes, approximately 3,700 soldiers were killed. This brought the United States into World War II. Many young men answered the call to defend our freedom and the freedom of others. A large platform was constructed in the area of the KMJ antenna in 1942 and was used to detect any plane which might fly over. At the top was a kitchen and a bed for resting as people would stay all night. By 1944, the residents of Kerman were supporting the U.S. savings bonds and Red Cross campaigns to help the war effort. The Kerman News carried frequent articles about Kerman men and women involved in the war effort. 
In 1945, Ray Wetmore, a graduate of Kerman Union High School in 1941, was a fighter pilot and flew a P-51 Mustang called Daddy's Girl, named after his newborn daughter. He was called the man with a telescopic vision. He had a total of 24 victories. Private Vernon May, also a graduate of Kerman Union High School, 1942, was commended by his commanding general. The citation read, his untiring efforts and devotion to duty were an inspiration to all. During the fighting in New Guinea, May was a litter bearer, and at times he went three days without food and most of the time in drenching rain and sniper fire from the enemy. Private First Class Harry Peterson, also a graduate of Kerman Union High School, 1941, participated in the recapture of Bataan and Corregidor. Captain Jack Cardwell holds the Air Medal with three bronze oak leaf clusters and a graduate of Kerman Union High School of 1938. General James Doolittle congratulates two Kerman soldiers, Corporal Louis Pacheco and Captain Ray Wetmore. The Harvest Festival Queen contest and parade were started. First queen was Greta Baptista. Her court was Eleonora Beck, Dorothy DeVries, Alice Potsikoff, and Lena May Goff. Her float was pulled by a World War II Willis Jeep. This celebration replaced the Kerman Day celebration, and it is still celebrated at the beginning of September. After several votes on June 6, 1946, Kerman re residents voted in favor of incorporation. July 10th, Ben Middleton became the first mayor and held the position for 10 consecutive years. The new police department was formed and Roy Logan became the first chief of police. Bill Sebastian purchased the Kerman Telephone Company and began improving the facilities. The North Central Fire Protection District was established. A fire station was built on D Street just west of Madeira Avenue. A fire engine was purchased and this became old engine number one. The fire truck is still used today in parades and other community functions. Tents were becoming a problem by 1947. There is no plumbing, electrical, or fire protection facilities. Only outhouses are available. No water directly available, and wiring is hazardous, if any. Building permits were issued only if they planned to build within a six-month period. A new drive-in restaurant opened on the corner of Madeira and F Street in 1951. It was owned by Warren Gibson and was called High Neighbor Drive-In. The La Ramada Mexican restaurant remodeled the old drive-in and is still there today. Pacific Greyhound Line started bus service to the business section of the city. Four passengers took advantage of the service on the initial trip. A 76 Union Oil service station comes to Kerman. Bill Sims acquires a gas pump, grease gun, and other items to supply his service station on the corner of Madeira and D Streets. On May 10th, a fire destroys the Himes Motor Company. Mayor Ben Middleton totally praises the Kerman Volunteers and the North Central Fire Protection District for a job well done. Many changes were made in Kerman in 1952. The Kerman Elementary School was completed at a cost of $471,000. Sun Empire Union School District was formed. New facilities were purchased and buildings constructed. The combining of Vinland, Dakota, Sunset, and Empire would make up Sun Empire Union Elementary School. In 1954, the old Kerman Grammar School building was remodeled and became Kerman City Hall, police station, and Department of Water and Sewage. The Kerman Free Library also moved in and stayed for 10 years. The next year, 1955, the Church of Christ moves into their new building at the corner of 6th and G Streets after meeting for several years in the building on the corner of 8th and D Streets. Valley Food Center gave Kerman residents the equivalent to a big city supermarket with its large facilities and good product selection. Valley Food Center still operates today in the Plaza Shopping Center. Kerman Elementary School and Floyd District School came together to form the Kerman Floyd Union School District in 1956. The new Kerman Municipal Swimming Pool was opened on July 26, 1957, 
and it was dedicated the next month on August 25th. A refreshing splash went good on Kerman's hot summer days. Mr. and Mrs. George Helsom were the Harvest Festival's king and queen in 1958. This is the first and only time an older couple were elected to the honor. From 1959 to 1965, there were no queens. Then in 1966, it was reinstated. And then in 1991, it was stopped. April 27, 1960. The Southern Pacific's Railroad Depot stopped operations after serving the community for 69 years. It was split in two and moved. One half is a house on McKinley, and the other half is being used for storage on Shasta Avenue and still has its original paint. An estimated crowd of 1,500 people were on hand for the opening of Kerman Cart Club's new track on the south end of town. But the go-kart track was put out of use in 2005 and is in the process of being demolished. Construction of the new Plaza Shopping Center was started at the corner of Weiss Bridge and Madeira in April of 1961. McMillan store was the first, then Save Mart. Save Mart burnt down and Foodland remodeled the store and did business for a while. Today, Valley Food Center occupies the spot. The new Kerman Evangelical United Brethren Church building would be dedicated on June 11th. Construction started on the building at the corner of Madeira and Shields Avenue. This marks the 50th anniversary of the construction of the original church building. The beginning of 1962 sees an unusual event, which very rarely happens in Kerman. It snowed for two days and it left approximately three to six inches on the ground. Most homes boasted a small snowman in the front yard. Most schools also shut down and driving became very interesting for people not used to driving in such conditions. January sees the completion of the new junior high school on 1st Street in 1964. In 1966, June, a new post office building is open and is located on the corner of 6th and D Streets. The facility is still being used today some 40 years later. The new Kerman High School was completed in 1967. After serving the high school students for 45 years, the old high school is closed down. The new campus is located on 1st Street. In July, it was reported that almost 100% of the cotton harvest was done by machine. The days of hand picking are gone. In 1963, cotton picked by hand was 28%. On November 9, 1969, the new city hall was opened, and three days later it was dedicated by Mayor Luther Sonny Coleman, who cut the ribbon. The presentation of an American flag was by the American Legion Auxiliary, and the inmates of San Quentin built the furniture for the new offices. The following year, 1970, the letters spelling out Kerman City Hall were straightened and lined to be on the same level. The council also decided to install the address on the building. Kerman Motor Parts moved into their new building closer to Four Corners or the crossroads of Madeira and Whitesbridge in 1977. It was later redesigned and repainted to become Smith's Auto. In 1978, a donation by the Helsom family was made to Kerman. Anna Helsom donates the Kerman Blacksmith Shop and all its tools, which was owned by her husband, George Helsman. Mayor Lee Shakwa accepted the donation for a future museum. It was relocated on the corner of 8th and D Streets. The project was to be completed in 1979. The Kerman Senior Citizen Center started a museum in 1979 in their building, which is the old Kerman Grammar School in hopes of preserving Kerman's history. It was in place for about five years. H&J Chevrolet moved from the old Plaza Garage, which was Sims Chevrolet, into their new building east on Whitesbridge Road. An investment company announced a new Kerman Shopping Center on the northwest corner of Whitesbridge and Madeira. Save Mart moved their store into this new shopping center after the old store burned down in the Plaza Shopping Center. Halloween was interesting to say the least in 1981. Business people all around Kerman dressed up for the occasion. 
It was interesting to go into one store and see a jungle girl, another to see Hollywood monsters, and another to see a can of peas walking around. The Kerman Unified School District bought together Sun Empire, Kerman Floyd, Kerman Junior High, and Kerman High Schools into one school district in 1983. Ben Middleton and Artis Huggins, longtime residents of Kerman, tell a general history of the early days of Kerman at a meeting of the Kerman Seroptimus Club. On August 5, 1985, Sun Empire Foods starts business south of town. They candy coat raisins and almonds with chocolate and yogurt. They have grown to shipping their product all around the world. They also give tours to any group which would like to see their operation. William Clinton was running for president against President George Bush in 1992, and while campaigning, Mr. Clinton came to Kerman and spoke at the high school. Many students from the other Kerman schools came to hear him speak. He was elected our 42nd president. On July 6, 1996, Kerman celebrated its 50th anniversary of being an incorporated city. There was a parade, fun and games, and these were from bygone days at Kirkhoff Park. Food booths, historic displays were constructed, and plenty of fun for the whole family. In August of 1997, the Kerman Cultural Arts Council is formed by Mrs. Joan Boyd, and they plan to have murals throughout the town. They are also trying to collect all historic photos and stories to preserve Kerman's history. The city of Kerman constructed a median down the middle of Madeira Avenue, from Whitesbridge to the north end of Plaza Park. Grass, bushes, and trees were planted all along the median. Trees were also planted in all the sidewalks. California Governor Pete Wilson came to Kerman and signed a school safety bill into law at Kerman Floyd Elementary in 1998. The students were given a great opportunity to witness how a bill becomes law. December 30th, the old Kerman Union High School main building on Madera and Clinton Avenues was destroyed by fire. It was reported four young men were responsible for the fire. After the burning of the old Kerman Union High School building, it was too far gone to repair and was declared a public hazard. It was torn down in January of 1999. Many people still mourn its passing today. The year 2000, the Kerman Cultural Arts Council, along with the city of Kerman, erected the first of four proposed gateway murals at the south end of town. It depicts the old railway station, which used to sit next to the railroad tracks. It was painted by Fresno artist J.J. Johnson. The new Kerman Telephone Company building was completed and put into service. A new doctor's office was built on the southeast corner of Madeira and California Avenues. Dr. Burr is the attending physician along with his wife. During the summer of 2001, the second gateway mural was erected on the north end of town. It was painted by Clovis artist Claudia Fletcher. It depicts the steamboat J.R. McDonnell approaching Skaggs Bridge. On the morning of September 11th, the United States of America was attacked. Terrorists hijacked four passenger jets and with the planes loaded with passengers, crashed two of them into the twin towers of the World Trade Center which caused them to fall. The Pentagon also was hit by a third, and the fourth was headed for Washington, D.C. For what target exactly, we're not sure, but because of some very brave passengers, which overtook the terrorist, and in the process, the plane crashed into rural Pennsylvania. This was Flight 93. In all, over 3,000 innocent souls were murdered by these terrorists. Liberty Intermediate School is completed and put into use in 2002. The name was selected from the student with the best idea for a name. It was Liberty. The city remodeled the old community center behind City Hall and expanded its police department facility. It has grown from one chief of police and one officer to 18 police officers. The Kerman Library has a new and permanent home at last. From its humble beginning in 1910 to a new permanent library building. It was dedicated as the Sebastian Building. 
The Kerman Blacksmith Shop mural was painted by Claudia Fletcher, and it depicts George Helsom shoeing a horse in the doorway of his shop. This mural is taken from an actual photograph, and the sign above reads, Kerman Blacksmith Shop, George Helsom Proprietor. Plaza Park was renamed and dedicated in April of 2003. The new name is Plaza Veterans Park with a memorial to Ray Wetmore, one of Kerman's own heroes. A new fence was placed around the park. A new Kerman sign was erected where the old Kerman side stood a hundred years ago. Cement walkways and gathering circles were placed in three different locations. The second circle is called Veterans Circle with monuments for those from Kerman who have served in wartime and the four flags from the armed services are flying. The city has plans to erect a statue of a soldier in the middle of the circle and a couple of cannon around the outside edge. Union Oil Company came and removed all item which even indicated 76 Union was ever in Kerman. After 56 years without warning, Unical pulled out of Kerman. It became Jerry Service Station. The Mustang Motel started remodeling by tearing down one of the geodesic domes and building six more rooms. When completed, it was renamed in honor of the Kerman Inn and was called the Kerman Inn Motel. The city of Kerman installed a new 750,000 gallon city water storage tank at the south end of town. In 2004, the two gateway entrance murals at the north and south end of town had new title signs installed on top which say, Historic Kerman. Plans for another entrance mural is being considered. Panoche Creek Almond Packing Plant built a new facility just south of the new water storage tank. This large new plant started processing in October. The gazebo was completed in Plaza Veterans Park. The all-metal frame was installed in the third cement circle in the south end of the park in 2005. It is a great gathering place during Kerman's hot summer days. Two new monuments were installed also. They are the Korean War and the Vietnam War memorials for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. So we may always remember and never forget. The Java Rush coffee stand was completed and open for business. It has been a big hit from the beginning. The beautiful United Health Center building was finished, and in April it was dedicated with a ribbon cutting is one of the most modern facilities of its kind in the state. A new small business plaza called the Crossroads was built north of Whitesbridge and Madeira Avenue. The new businesses which came into town are Curves and Cash Advance. Three more businesses are also coming to the new business center in 2006 and they are Quiznos, Movie Gallery, and Percos. The Kerman Wrecking Yard was begun to the east of the city on Whitesbridge. It is run by Jack Sadu, owner and operator of JS Auto Sales in downtown Kerman and currently one of our city council members. Kerman Pets opened with a variety of pets, pet items, and services to serve Kerman. Other stores have carried pet and pet items, but this is Kerman's first all pet centered store. The new holding cell facility at Kerman Police Department was finished and dedicated in November. Here we see Ron Manfredi, the city manager, trying out the new facility. Kerman has grown past Siskiyou on the west and to Goldenrod on the east. We now come to the end of the first 100 years. As we started out with the article written in 1925 describing Kerman as a place where we can dream and make things happen, we have seen they really do. The first people who came to fulfill their dreams has made Kermit what it is today. It continues to grow, and who knows what the next 100 years may bring. Whether good or bad, Kermit will meet the challenge, and will keep on dreaming, because this truly is the place where dreams come true.